Time now for your questions answered on BBC News. We'll be answering your questions about coronavirus. With me to answer some of them is Dr Mike Tildesley, an Associate Professor of Infectious Diseases at the University of Warwick. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. No problem. Good morning. Morning. So Tony asks on Twitter, is the rise in COVID-19 cases due to more testing for the disease now that we know it, it exists? If that's the case, would we find more evidence of cases if we tested past samples from people who had apparently had flu? Well, this is actually um, this is actually a really good question, and this is one of the real challenges we have when we're trying to predict the number of cases of coronavirus. If we see the situation in China, um, we're only reporting people who have quite severe symptoms and are seeking treatment. Um, and the big difficulty we have at the moment is trying to identify people in the community who may have had much milder symptoms, sort of flu-like symptoms, cough and cold and so forth, and haven't seek, uh, sought treatment. Um, so. Actually, one of the things that's been happening in the UK when we've seen cases is what's been called contact tracing to try to find people who may have been in contact with confirmed cases to exact, do exactly that, to then test those. It's extremely possible that there may have been people who have flu-like symptoms in the population and have not been confirmed. Um, and it's one of the really important things we need to try to do to determine how bad the um, outbreak could really get. Amanda via Twitter says we're being told not to touch our faces, nose and mouth. So why is mask wearing actively discouraged? It will at least stop or provide a barrier to people touching their faces and might help hinder oral and viral particle spreading by hindering facial touching. So this is actually a, this is actually a really difficult one. So there's been lots of lots of advice about this. The difficulty with your standard surgical masks is they don't prevent all infection from happening. They don't fit perfectly around the mouth uh, and nose. It's still possible to be infected if you wear a mask. It will reduce risk a little bit. And there is evidence to suggest that actually wearing a mask will slightly reduce your risk of being infected. However, there is research that ha does suggest that actually some people who wear masks actually might not follow other good hygiene practices much because they view the mask as being somehow preventative. So I would say it's not, it will reduce risk slightly, but it is not a substitute for maintaining good hygiene practices, regular hand washing, trying to minimise contact with um, suspected or already infected individuals. Janine via Twitter says, if person-to-person pers -person spread is being witnessed, why are people who haven't been abroad or had known contact with an infected person not being tested? Italy has done a lot of testing to limit the spread. Is there a reason why the UK is not testing as widely? It's a really good question, isn't it? Because everything keeps relating back to you only need to worry if you've had direct contact mm. with someone from an affected area. But there's community spreading now as far as it seems. Uh, so actually, this is a really good question. And actually, maybe this isn't something that's being as widely reported in the media. There has actually been quite a significant number of people tested in the UK. It's in the tens of thousands. Um, uh, possibly not quite as many as have been tested in Italy, but that's because we have over 7,000 confirmed cases in Italy compared with around about 300 in the UK. What's happening in the UK at the moment is as I was saying earlier, this contact tracing going on to try to identify high risk individuals and then they are being tested. Now, that, as I say, that number is about in the tens of thousands now. The vast majority of those have been tested negative. Um, but of course, the figures that are being reported is the sort of 300 or so that have had confirmed infection. Terry via email, as more people get infected and then recover from the virus, can their antibodies be harvested and used to treat those who are very sick with coronavirus? So this is this is an excellent question. I will start by saying this isn't exactly my direct area of expertise. Um, this is something that's called um, plasma therapy. Um, and there is evidence, it has been used in previous outbreaks. It was used to treat patients for highly pathogenic avian influenza. And it was used during the relatively recent um, Ebola crisis we saw in Africa to treat some patients. Um, there is work going on currently in China to look at the potential effectiveness of this uh, plasma therapy. But at the moment, it's really unclear how effective that would be for the current coronavirus outbreak.